Before now, you've used multiple variables to represent a piece of data describing a person or an object. While this is not wrong, it can become cumbersome to maintain when you have many values to store. It's only logical to want to group these pieces of values into one construct so it's easier to use and change them. In this episode, you'll do just that using pairs and triples. Let's get started. In the starter project, you have three constants defined. A person's name, last name, and age. The first logical grouping of data would be the name and last name. I'll replace that with a pair like so. Here, you created a pair object and used a generic variance to represent a pair of two strings, which you defined within the angled brackets. The pair constructor takes in two values of any type or combination of types, but you chose to pass in two strings in this example. Instead of using two values, you are now grouping them into one. But how do you access the values now? There are two ways to do this. The first is using the access properties defined on a pair. Add the following code. Using the first and second properties, you are actually assessing the values you passed into the pair constructor. You learn more about constructors down the learning path. Run the code now to see the name and last name printed out accordingly. The second way of accessing the values is called destructuring. There are a few Kotlin constructs which allow you to split up internal values into smaller pieces of data. To do so with a pair, write down the following. Here, you extract the values from the full name and assign it to name and last name. You're using the structuring declaration to break down a pair to two values. These values point to the pair.first and pair.second values when used. And notice, Kotlin inferred the type to be string, so there's no need to explicitly add the types. Move this declaration up and change the print code to the following. Run the code now to see the name and last name printed out. Nothing has changed, but your code is now easier to read compared to calling pair.first and pair.second. Pairs allow you to mix and match any types of values you want. This means you don't have to hold two strings in a pair. You can store a string and an int or even another pair. This is the beauty of generics. You can define a class without a specific type and use generics to make it dynamic like we've done here. Create a person constant now and set it to be a pair of the full name and the age. First, remove the age constant you declared and add in the pair like so. You now have a pair which holds a pair of two strings and an int. Notice that the types are not specified here. This is because Kotlin can infer the type based on what you pass to the constructor. It would be a bit complicated to access the name or last name as you'd have to write person.first.first or person.first.second every time you want to access them. So let's remove the full name pair and simply pass in the full name to the person. Also remove the print statement. Now. Let's see how you can implement a triple. A triple holds three values, but has similar behavior like a pair. It also has a constructor to create it, taking in three values and it can be destructured. You can also use the triple.first, triple.second, and now triple.third properties to access the values. Let's expand upon the age example. Create a triple called birthday and put in the day, month, and year of birth of yourself or your favorite celebrity. I don't have favorites, but I'll go with Bonaboy, who happens to be Damini Ogulu, the name I've been using. So, I'll add that now. Instead of storing just the age, you can now store the birthday triple and the person pair. And make sure you declare the birthday triple before the person pair. If not, it won't exist at that point just like what you saw and that's why I took it above the person pair. You can now once again get the full name by referencing the first value of the pair and get the birthday by referencing the second value.
And ordering is once again a valid way to fetch data, but it's easier with destructuring. Add in the following code. Furthermore, you have to destructure the birthday to access all the values. You can now print out the data in a nice format. To do that, add in the following code. Run the code now to see all the data. But what if you don't need a piece of data when you're destructuring? Say you're not willing to expose your year of birth to others, but you still want to destructure other values. Do that by changing the destructuring code to the following. By using an underscore, you can omit values you don't care about. Also, change the print statement to the following. Remember, you can still fetch the year of birth using the ordering notation like so. Now, run the project once more to make sure things are working as before. Cool, you should now have a good understanding of pairs and triples. And as you progress in your Kotlin journey, you'll see how all these are effectively used.